Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of KPCC and LAist, welcome to our No Panic Guide Live virtual event series. This series is an extension of your No Panic Guide to the Coronavirus in LA, which is a comprehensive resource from our newsroom, which you can find at laist.com. My name is John Cohn. I manage live programming and events for KPCC and LAist. Today's No Panic Guide Live edition is focused on homemade facial coverings. Tomorrow, we'll be back with reporter Aaron Mendelson and attorney Javier Beltran to navigate rental life in the new eviction moratorium. And there are more events to come. You can sign up for our weekly events newsletter, follow us on social media for updates. If you're in a position which you can support KPCC and LAist, we are always grateful for anything you can do. Links to all these points of connection are in your comment section or will be soon. And without further ado, here's KPCC and LAist infrastructure correspondent, Sharon McNary. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm Sharon McNary. I cover infrastructure here at KPCC, which I define as the things we build together to make life better. But in this day of social distancing, you know, sometimes we need to build things ourselves so we can stay apart safely. Um, I've been a, a sewer almost my entire life. In fact, I'm going to show you something that my mother gave me when I was in first grade. This is a sewing machine and it's much older than I am. It's probably from the 1920s. Um, and I used to sew doll clothes. Now I sew all my, a lot of my own clothes. I, I sewed this blouse that I'm wearing. And I also sewed this face cover. It is, a uh, pretty much what we're all being asked to wear nowadays uh, to avoid spreading the coronavirus. Um, so you probably wanted to make one yourself, especially if you thought enough to tune in. Um, but first I wanna talk a little bit about the different kinds of masks. We've heard a lot about this on uh, TV, on radio, um, but I just wanted to show you, this is an N95 mask. This is the one that medical people are wearing um, and I have one because I use it during fire season um, when I go and I don't want to breathe in smoke all day. And generally they've been pretty available, but we've never seen anything on the scale of this national emergency. So these are a really hot item right now. And we're trying to get people who don't need to be near an active coronavirus patient to save these for the use of medical professionals. It's got an electric static filter on it. It's um, made of a non-woven fabric. It fits around the nose um, and it really helps keep the smoke and things that are smaller, or I'm sorry, things that are larger than three microns out of it. Now a coronavirus molecule is about five microns. So it's not gonna get in here if it's tightly fitted around your nose and your mouth. Um, there's also surgical masks that nurses and doctors are wearing. Um, they're also asking us not to use those. So instead, what we've seen is a lot of places ordering us to wear cloth face coverings. Um, you know, this is one that I made myself. It's kind of fancy. It's got some like, you know, bias tape. It's got elastic. It's got little darts to keep it under the chin. But there are easier ones that you can make. And I'm going to demonstrate um, how to make one in just a second. If you want to run and get an old t-shirt and some scissors, you can follow along and make your own. Um, but in the meantime, I, while you're getting that, I just want to talk to you a little bit about why we wear masks. Um, you know, we're not doctors and nurses, especially getting near the coronavirus, but we do want to keep our droplets to ourselves, the things that spew out of your mouth when you're singing or shouting or whatever. Um, wearing a cloth layer over your mouth can help others from getting sick if you have it and you might not even know it. They know that you're shedding the virus days before you're feeling any symptoms. So let's all go around acting as if we do have an infection so that we can keep from infecting others. Okay, got your t-shirt? Let's make the easiest mask that there is out there to make. Um, I'm gonna start with my fantastic uh, KPCC live events t-shirt. I don't know if you can see that in the second camera there. And what you do is you like put it out nice and straight and you get a template, a little card. We drink a lot of root beer in my house. You get a little cardboard template like that and you put it down on an edge and then you just cut around it. And I'm going to do that right now. 
Um, this is like a half of an H and this N is on a fold. Okay, the fold in the t-shirt. And so I'm just gonna cut around it like that and like that and like that, like that and that. And one more cut right there. All right, let's see if I did this right. There we go, oh, a few more. Okay, so now what you have is a little H of fabric. Tie one there and tie one there. And this is good enough to go out in. You're not gonna get refused service. Okay, now you might've seen the way I cut this out. I left a fold on the other side. Okay, so looky here. I can make another mask very easily by going right here and right there. Cut this off to the edge, there we go. There we go. And this last bit here. Okay, whoops, Get back here. Okay, now the next mouse is gonna have the KPCC logo on it. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, and you're done. So this is, Everybody's got t-shirts hanging around. You did a 5K race, you went to a fundraiser, you came home with a t-shirt. Anybody can do that. And this is what the template looks like. It's just like a, a chair or a, an H or a big C with a big back. Um, so that's something anybody can do. You can make it a family project. We know you've got a lot of kids at home. Um, hopefully you can do that. Now, what do you want to make your mask out of? Generally, you want a tightly woven cotton uh, because that's going to be breathable. And you can actually put a filter inside of it that's made of something like a coffee filter or a non woven piece of fabric. Um, here's the easiest. Okay, that other one was easy. This one's even easier. Um, what you can do is take your trusty KPCC bandana from a few pledge drives ago and a couple of hair ties. And you just, you've probably seen this one on the internet. Just fold it up. You can take a, a little filter, like some unwoven fabric like that and put it in there. And put your hair tie at one end. And fold another hair tie at the other end. And fold. And now this is gonna go like that. And this is enough to get you through a shopping trip or something else. It's not as tight around your nose or under your chin, um, but it's something. Um, and what we're hearing right now is the jurisdictions that have told people like essential workers, people who are working in grocery stores, drug stores, hardware stores, all the few places that are still open, in the city of Los Angeles, the mayor is telling them they must wear face protection. And not only that, in the city of Los Angeles, anybody going into one of those places must wear a face covering, the non-medical kind, like what we're talking about. Um, and what if you don't? Well, then they can refuse you service. So if you wanna buy your milk, wanna pick up your medicine, um, you know, get that thing for the busted drain, you gotta wear one of these. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Uh, well, you can make it out of tightly woven cotton. Let's say you can't get out to the fabric store because the lines there are too long or it's closed. You could take an old pillowcase and this is gonna have a lot of fabric. I could probably get 10, 15 masks out of something like this. So that's a good thing you can use. Um, you know, if you've got like an old dress shirt, that's tightly woven cotton. You could make a mask out of that. There's any number of online tutorials and little films online that you can see. So there's just a lot of options uh, that you can do. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say about um, taking care of your mask is um, as you breathe in and out of them, they're going to get a little um, like steamed up from your breath. 
Um, and you might be like pulling virus onto the mask or pushing, you know, your own breath droplets out. Your mask wants to be washed, you know, wash it maybe every day um, or anytime it feels like it's getting a little, a little wet. Um, and most of these, you can just throw them in the washing machine or just hand wash it with some soap, hot water, dry it hot, maybe dry it with a hair dryer, throw it in the dryer, um, that'll work. We have with us um, a guest. Um, it's uh, Sonia Smith Kang. Hello. Hi. Um, I wanted to introduce people to you um, because you've done something really special. So uh, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what you're doing. Yeah, thanks for having me. I am uh, Sonia Smith Kang and I'm founder of Mixed Up Clothing. It's a children's clothing line that celebrates culture and diversity. Uh, we source fabric from all over the world and turn them into fun everyday prints for, uh, for children. That sounds really great, um, but yee, something happened to your business, right? Yeah, so I am also a critical care registered nurse uh, who is married to a physician. And we uh, started hearing, you know, that um, masks were in shortage. And I knew I was having to start uh, letting folks off, uh, sewing contractors, parts of our team uh, because of this downturn. Um, so I made, a, I made a pivot and I decided to turn our, all the surplus fabric that we have from children's clothes to masks. Wow, um, how many have you made? So we're over a thousand that we've made. Uh, over 300 have gone out as donations of, uh, from generous folks and also donors um, that have come in and said, you know, how can I help? And who's receiving these masks? So we've uh, anywhere on our website, uh, if they're a person who is a, a healthcare professional or one of the essential workers, we've received a request to our website. Um, and then our local hospital, Northridge Hospital, has also been the recipient of some of our masks. But we want to make sure that we're available to whomever needs our masks. That's great. So um, how do people find you? Yeah, they can find us online at mixedupclothing.com. And of course, all social media is through our handle at Mixed Up Clothing. Well, that's great. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Um, you were mentioning that your employees, um, you're having to lay them off. Um, has that kind of turned around now? Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the silver linings. Uh, not only have we been able to help um, the heroes on the front lines and essential workers, but we've been able to kind of keep this economy going in the fashion district here in Los Angeles. I went from one uh, sewing contractor, we're now up to five who are making all our fun little masks that I have here in front of me. Um, and that is really by far one of the best things that I can do as a business owner is to make sure uh, folks are not struggling um, and during this pandemic. Well, it sounds like a great public service and a way to provide additional jobs. I know the fabric, the, 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 the garment district has been, had been a little bit of a ghost town. Is it still that way? What are you seeing? It is actually still a ghost town. I uh, have called all my sewing um, or fabric stores. Uh, they have shut down. Some were giving citations for, uh, for being open. So, um, so, there's, there's that part, but um, I was fortunate enough to have some surplus fabric for other uh, uh, things. And we were using that as, and we're going through as many bolts and rolls as we can to get these masks out. That's great. I'm up to about um, eight yards of fabric so far, and I've been able to do about 80 masks. I can get about 21 masks out of two yard piece of fabric and and that's really stressing my abilities because I'm only working when I'm not <laughs> doing my own job. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I know people really appreciate that buy one, donate one um, deal. And I know there's people all over the country making masks right now. Yeah, we, we wanted to just do it. Uh, we started out as just donations. And then when folks wanted to pitch in 
and really had that community spirit, uh, we decided to open up and let them come in and help us uh, push this initiative to get behind the mask and uh, cover up. Well, that's really great. Well, thanks for being with us. It's Sonia Smith Kang. Um, one of our fantastic supporters of KPP, KPCC and um, a great mask maker. Thank you. That's great. Um, we'll have a good day. Um, I think we're gonna turn to some questions now. Um, I think people are submitting questions to us a couple different ways, but I think you can write them on um, the Facebook page um, and uh, our intrepid producers will get them to us. Uh, so let me look and see what we got. Okay, so first question. Um, oh, what are the dimensions of the cutout and can you use ordinary scissors? Yeah, I've got it right here. And I actually have, uh, this is about 11 inches long and this is about eight inches high. And then this is about five inches. And so when you put it on the fold, when you put it on the fold, this is gonna open up to 10 inches, right? And then this is gonna extend around the head. And um, the nice thing about t-shirt fabric is when you cut it this inch wide will actually uh, become, I tried one yesterday, um, it'll become like a little elastic tie. When you stretch this, you see how it rolls nicely? So it's, it's all gone. So uh, yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, Maple Canadian <laughs> asks, um, I made my own mask out of an old t-shirt, but how on earth are you supposed to breathe if you make it tight around your face? I nearly passed out wearing it. I will definitely agree with you. The t-shirt masks are a little bit hard to breathe with. I'd say just kind of like work around a couple different things. Maybe you tie the top a little bit tighter than the chin. Um, just experiment around. Um, also, if you make the ties longer or if you like wear a hat, you can tie it above the hat. Um, one thing that I have seen is a lot of the nurses and doctors who are wearing these um, uh, masks that have the elast elastic loops, they're wearing them so much, the skin around the backs of their ears are getting a little um, rubbed raw. And so they've also started wearing headbands with buttons and then they loop this around the buttons. Um, so that's been one option for um, kind of like keeping it on. Let's see, I got another question. What is the best wet, what is the best mask I can wear to prevent airborne particles from entering my lungs? And will it help to wear two masks at the same time? Well, I do know that there have been in the medical world, um, some people who are using like a cotton outer mask to cover their N95 mask to make it last longer. Hopefully the stockpile of supplies nationwide will start freeing up the supplies of these um, so that they're more plentiful and medical professionals don't have to use you know, additional covers to extend the life of these masks. Um, the best mask you can wear to prevent airborne particles from entering your lungs is one of these medical grade masks. However, those of us who are not in frontline medical positions, police, fire, uh, you know, those frontline people, they're being asked to stay at home or physically distance. Um, you're picking up the, the particles from people who are breathing on you and you're breathing in others. So if you keep up with the hand washing, keep physical distance, wear a face covering so your particles aren't going out, you know, you should be it's better than nothing, but I can't recommend that if you're not in one of these frontline jobs, you go out and get the best mask at all. Now, I mean, I do have a paint mask up there that I guess I could wear. It's got all kinds of filters and stuff, um, but even those are probably sold out at the, at the hardware stores. Um, two masks at the same time. Okay, we got them. Um, Kevin asks, are some materials more effective than others for making homemade masks? Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Tightly woven cotton. Um, like what you see in this bandana is going to be the best thing um, because it's washable, it's breathable, it's easy to sew with, you can iron it um, to sterilize it, you can wash it with soap and it's not going to do weird things like, you know, silk or rayon or something like that. 
Um, and then some people are using these non-woven layers, like poly, it's a polyester fabric, but it's non-woven. Um, some people are using like the blue shop towels as the inner layer, as a filter. Um, there's just a lot of different things you can do um, to, uh, to do that. Let's see, uh, I read this thing, oops, that question just went away. <laughs> what do I think about using a coffee filter as a liner? Will it still wash okay? Well, yeah, basically the coffee filter, and I've got a couple right here. Um, the coffee filter, it goes in your mask through a little slit that you cut or a slit that you leave, take it out before you wash it. So you can breathe through this, not easily, um, but take the liner out if it's a paper liner, because otherwise you're just gonna get a, a massive pulp in your, in your mask. Um, so yeah, so take that out. Non-cloth masks, how often should I be replacing them? Um, you mean like the, the, the surgical mask? I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, I mean, you want to be able to clean and sanitize your mask uh, fairly regularly. So, and I, I wouldn't recommend something that's plastic because that's not gonna have the breathability that you want. Um, but a cloth mask, as long as you have, I, I would have like two or three and just rotate them through and wash them with soap and hot water fairly regularly. And you can air dry it, hair dryer it, throw it in the dryer, um, that sort of thing. Um, I have another question. Are J cloth towels a good filter to insert in a mask? Is, the, is that like a shop towel? I think so, yeah. I think that's a, a great choice if it's not, if, if it's still breathable. You know, if you can't breathe in your mask, you're not gonna be wearing it, which means you're not as safe. And also remember, where are you wearing a mask? You should be like home or separated from most people for most of the time. So, you know, wear it when you need it, if you're gonna be out near people. Um, let's see, what are, Oh, I went pretty too fast on the template. Let me, let me show you the measurements again. This time I have my tape measured. Okay, so the template is, okay, this one is 13 inches long on the outside, the legs. The inside is about five and a quarter inches long. And this thing is about six and a half inches tall. And it's gonna go like half, and you can actually measure it on your own face. So half my face here, the ties are long enough to tie in the back, especially when you're stretching the, the legs of the, um, of the thing. Uh, let's see, can you go in your front yard or backyard without a mask? Um, I wanna say yes. Um, I'm in my front yard, I have a gigantic picnic table out front. So sometimes when it's not raining, I take my computer out there and I say hello to my neighbors and I'm not wearing a mask if I'm far away from people. Um, I'm not wearing a mask if I'm running because I'm far away from people. If I'm walking, I'm more likely to be closer to people. Um, and I might even walk in the street. Um, I really don't wanna get this virus. So I will take a wide berth around. Um, but if I'm gonna go anywhere, like do the grocery shopping for my husband, who's not allowed out of the house these days, um, I'm wearing the mask. So yes, I'd say backyard, you're good without a mask. Um, Gavin Sweeney asks, should we worry about transmitting the virus to others if we wear these masks for friends, neighbors, and coworkers? Um, yes, you should. Um, this mask is gonna keep the biggest molecules of stuff from getting away from your face, but it's no substitute. It's not perfect. You want to keep a good six feet or maybe more uh, between you and your neighbors. So if you're going to have, you know, a front yard gab fest, you know, set up the lawn chairs eight to 10 feet apart and just speak loudly. Um, you know, I went to pick up a, a, a piece of furniture this morning. Somebody was giving away. I wore a little New York Times uh, baggies on my hands to pick it up because I didn't want to waste a pair of gloves, but I also didn't want to touch what that person had touched. And now I'm leaving that in my car for 24 hours before I go back out to it. Um, so I'd say just be really careful. Um, you should act as if you are infected, even though you're not. 
so that you're avoiding giving your germs to somebody else. Um, and continuing with the hand washing and the, you know, the, the, the physical distancing. Um, let's see, if you'd like to uh, ask a question, we can take them on our Facebook page. Um, uh, I'm happy to answer as many questions as you have. Um, let's see, should I wear a mask while driving? I, you know, I have seen, um, I think it was in San Bernardino County, there wear a mask will say yes while you're driving. I'm thinking, you know, I'm in my auto bubble and nobody's been in this car except me. I don't know why I would wear it while I'm driving. Um, so when I've been driving, I've actually been um, kind of uh, doing this thing so that if somebody really wants to point the finger at me, I can pull it up. I do have a mask at hand while I'm driving. Um, so I think that's helpful. Um, oh, and then Sonia, our uh, mask maker is also available for questions if you wanna address one to her or two or five. Um, let's see. Okay, here's an important question. Um, Rebecca Myers uh, asks, um, I've read that there are glass fibers in the vacuum bags and they could be hazardous to your health. Is there a way to find out? Um, you know, this has been, when I first heard about people using vacuum bags or air conditioner filters and they've cut them up and used those as the liners in their masks, um, I thought that was pretty brilliant. And then I did a little bit of research. I went to the 3M website and they are saying, this is not a good idea. Uh, they're saying that vacuum cleaner bags might have fiberglass particles, which you don't want to have in your lungs. Uh, and they're saying about their own like filtry, you know, filters that go in the air conditioner ab above your head. They say those are industrial products that haven't been tested for use in this way. And so, you know, they're being a big company avoiding litigation. They don't, they say don't do it. So uh, I, I, that really made me decide not to do that. And I'm going to use far more benign materials like a coffee filter or a paper towel or some non-woven interfacing. It just feels safe because it's a consumer product. It, it just feels safer to, to, to go that way. Um, let's see. And Rebecca Myers says, thanks so much for all your great reporting. Well, you know, the whole newsroom of KPCC has been, it, it's been literally all hands on deck for quite a while. Um, it's been an interesting time to be a reporter for, for sure. Um, Gavin Sweeney asks, if we ship the masks, is there still a concern the virus could live in the masks in transit? I think that's an excellent question. What we've been told is that the virus can survive um, a certain amount of time on cardboard, a certain amount longer time on plastic. Um, so what I've been doing when I finish my mask is I'm heating up my steam iron and I'm putting it on the mask and just blasting the heck out of that mask with heat and steam because heat is gonna kill the virus. Um, and then I'm very carefully using something else like tongs, picking it up, putting it in a plastic bag, sealing it, and then mailing it off. So, and it's probably gonna take 24 hours for that manila envelope to get there. So I'm not that worried about the person I'm sending it to getting anything that I might transmit, but I am advising them, hey, you know, you might wanna launder the mask or, you know, hit it with a hot iron when you get it and wash it frequently. That's, that's the other thing. Um, so good question, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm not sick. Um, <laughs> uh, Leslie Kerr asks, I'm immune compromised. Why shouldn't I wear a mask if I'm out in public? Um, I really can't think of a reason for anybody to not wear a mask if they're in public. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, Sonia, you're a nurse. Why don't you answer this one while I get a drink of water? Oh, absolutely. So yeah, I agree. I think uh, right now is a time for wearing masks um, and uh, we're listening to our, our government officials and making sure that everyone around us is also staying healthy. I think it's a great time to show our neighborly uh, love and uh, compassion for one another. So wearing masks when out, um, in addition to all the other stuff we're told to do is a great idea. Okay, thank you. That's that's critical care nurse right there. So 
Um, I did get a question uh, when I was preparing for this. Um, more than a week ago, when the CDC first came out with its advice that most people should wear a mask when they're out in public, um, the very same day in the very same briefing, our president said he thought it was voluntary and he wasn't going to do it. And so the person is asking me, well, if the president is not going to do it, you know, why should I? It's voluntary, right? Well, in some areas, it's not voluntary anymore. Riverside County, San Bernardino County, some cities, Los Angeles City. Um, but think about it. The president is living in a far higher quality of health care than all of us. If you want to go see the president, you're taking a coronavirus test before you get to go in. You know, the results come back within about 15 minutes. So he gets to live in a more of a protective bubble than the rest of us. I don't have that. And so I have to live under other assumptions. So I'm actually going to wear my mask, even if it is voluntary. Um, oh, Brad Worley is asking a question. If I have gloves and a face mask and practice keeping my distance from people, how much am I, of a risk am I taking of catching the virus when I go outside? Um, you know, this is the week. This is, I mean, this is hard stuff. I mean, we've listened to Barbara Ferrer, the director of public health for Los Angeles County, um, saying this is the week. There's a lot of virus out there. Stay in your homes. Now, we've heard about the six foot distance that your drop wheels can, can travel if you're not wearing a mask. Um, but, you know, just think about every surface you touch might have been touched by somebody else. You've seen the graphic with all the balls bouncing around that are representing people, you know, who are practicing social distance, they're not getting it, but, you know, if they're bouncing against each other out in the public, they might be. There's, you know, just think about the last time you got a flu and everybody in your office had it. You're, you're not, you know, sitting right on their laps, you know, you're, you're in about six foot distance space. I just want to err on the side of safety. Um, I mean, I don't think I'm going to get it if I go running and I'm staying away from everybody, but I'm hearing other people who say, oh no, that it's in the air now. Well, we don't truly know how long the stuff is suspended in the air, how long it's living on surfaces. They have some ideas and that's what we've tried to convey, but I just don't think it's a great idea to um, be outside without some kind of protection if you're going to be near people. So um, anyway, oh, here's a question for Sonia. Uh, Sonia, which hospitals are collect collecting masks and other supplies from citizens? Uh, and this person says, Long Be oh, Sage Column says this, Long Beach Memorial Medical Center is one, and uh, there's a list for various areas with collection locations, days and times, or links would be helpful. Please include in radio and online information. Let's help our frontline in the world. Well, thank you, Sage. Um, so Sonia, how do people find out uh, who's collecting masks? Right, that's a great question. There's uh, LA Protects, which is the initiative started by uh, Mayor um, uh, Gar Garcetti. He, there, if you go on their website, the government page, and I'm sure we could drop that in the link as well. Uh, they have, they're collecting organizations, healthcare teams uh, that are accepting of donations. Um, and so they'll be able to have a list because each hospital has different requirements. For instance, Kaiser Permanente has their own uh, guidelines of what they'll accept. I know Northridge Hospital as well. So first step would be if there is a local uh, hospital you'd like to donate, give their foundation or their hospital a call and see what their guidelines are before heading over and donating. That's a really good response. Um, and then let me add this, you know, in an organization like a hospital, you're gonna have the people who are you know, in the ICU and doing direct nursing and doctoring, but you're also gonna have receptionists and there are people who clean hospitals and there are people who you know, park the cars. I mean, there's all kinds of people who are not all going to have the same access you know, to the fancy N95 mask. Um, and so a hand-sewn mask, you know, this, this homemade version um, is, uh, more of an option for people there. So you don't need to think that you're, you're operating 
you know, theater is going to have people wearing homemade masks, but they might have like the head coverings or the, the gowns. I think people are making some of those too. And here, I mean, I, I appreciate the questions that are coming in. Uh, Flu says, if the masks don't stop COVID-19, how are they helping anyone? And that's such a good question. The idea is not that you're protected from breathing in a virus that's in the air. What the mask is doing is keeping your own droplets from hitting others, right? And for the rest of the protection, you're hand washing, you're physically distancing yourself from other people. Um, but if you're getting up close to somebody with one of these cotton masks on, it's not, the, the, the fabric is not tightly enough woven to keep out a droplet that is like five microns. I mean, that's so teeny tiny. Um, I mean, a good test to see if your, if your mask is, is tightly woven enough is hold it up to the light. If you can see the light bulb through that, it, it probably is not uh, tightly woven enough. Um, so th th that is a, a very good question. Um, Sonia, what do you think about I, I, I totally agree. And I think what it, oh, you're also saying is when you are wearing the mask, it's saying, I care about you. And I think that's really the important thing is where if we're out and they're, you know, you're facing grocers and you're real or delivery folks, you're really saying I'm wearing this mask because I care that and hope that you don't get if they're, you know, if I am not showing symptoms at this point. And I think that's really what covering up and wearing the mask is for is uh, we're sending a message. I think that's, that's, that's absolutely right. I mean, let's get real. I mean, we're in a national emergency. W what is the overall death count right now? Over 12,000 people, hundreds of them in California. Um, it's, it is a message. It says, I care enough about you, my neighbor, to let you know that I'm aware of the need for physical distancing and I'm gonna put this silly thing on my face. And um, I'm actually working on a piece that will run on NPR on Friday about all the different ways we're saying hello to each other when, when, our, when our faces are covered. You know, you can't smile through a mask unless one is drawn on your mask. So, you know, we have people doing like the namaste, hello, the hi there, hello. I do, yeah, there you go. The shaka, hello from Hawaii. Um, I do kind of like a right turn signal. I don't know why. I, I'm just used to doing it on my bicycle. Um, so there's just, you know, I, there's just a million ways to say hello and be friendly and recognize that this is a terrible, terrible time for our country. And we all need to kind of, you know, have an element of collective response. Um, so even if you don't think a mask is doing anything, do it for that. Say, I care. Um, let's see. Uh, can I go to one of my own? Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> my producer is giving me some really good prompts here. Um, did that one, did that one, oh, did that one. Oh, okay, how about this? What else should I wear when I'm going out? Okay, so we know that you get the virus by it goes in your mouth, it goes in your nose, it gets in your eyes. Those are the ways it's getting in. And it's getting in that way when you touch your face and then the germs will migrate. So if you're wearing a mask, it doesn't hurt to also wear eyeglasses. So you're not putting your hands in your eyes. And then I don't have one with me. You throw on a hat and you, you know, Ray-Bans, you could be completely anonymous. No one will know it's you wearing that mask out there. Um, so, uh, and you know, gloves can keep you, but if you're gonna put on a mask and you think you're coming into contact with something, you should be careful about not touching the outside of the mask and keeping the outside of the mask away from your skin and your face. If you're wearing gloves, you know, take the gloves off with the contaminated sides against the contaminated sides. So just kind of turn those gloves inside out. So anyway, are you, are you having flashbacks to medical school? Listen, I'm 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 loving all all this. Yes, this is great. I think absolutely uh, one of the uh, things as well that we want to make sure that uh, you're not substituting all the the advice that we've been giving from and you know listening to from your programs, all the experts that are telling us exactly what to do. So we don't want to make you know lighten lessen any of those things that we've been told to do. This is just one added protection. Right. Um, I, 
the, the other thing that I wanted to mention um, along the lines of what Sonia was saying about like, you know, this is a collective expression of, you know, caring for the people in our society by wearing a mask. Um, there are a lot of efforts out there that um, are, are worthwhile. So LA Protects, it's a hashtag. Um, it's a creation of uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti. There's also a Facebook group. I, I hope some of the members are watching right now. It's called Stitched Together. It's a Facebook group that was created for, you know, home sewing people to make masks. And they've got a huge list of places that they can be donated to. Some of them are hospitals and some of them are like more medical adjacent, like social workers. They need masks, but they don't need the fancy N95. But if you're a social worker and you're going to see like a foster child, you know, you want to protect that child from everything. Um, and so there's some organizations like that that are asking for masks. Um, there's a hashtag called uh, Million Mask Challenge, a company that sells sewing machines is trying to get everybody to make like a million masks nationwide uh, of these home sewn masks. So if, if you look right, and then the other thing is um, there are a million YouTube tutorials on how to make these masks. They've got the ones for like the, the round duckbill masks and the nice square pleated masks. Um, it, seriously, anything you want to do in the mask making venue, there's free instruction out there on YouTube right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, here's our last question, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, so Maple Canadian says, if homemade masks don't protect the wearer, how will it help hospital workers? The fewer cases that crop up in LA and California in the nation, the less stressed our hospital you know, system will be. The danger right now and what we've been seeing in New York is that the number of people with serious symptoms of the COVID-19 illness are so many and their situation is so dire, it is exhausting the resources of our already vast medical system. There's just not enough doctors, not enough nurses, not enough ventilators. So the more you can do to keep from getting this virus, this disease of COVID-19, the more you're helping stretch our medical system to those who have not been able to avoid it. Um, Sonia, what's your take on that question? I would, the only thing I would add what would be also, uh, you're allowing those supplies from to get there. Uh, so if folks are buying, you know, masks, if, if they are available, um, we're really trying, and which is why I liked your differentiation between facial coverings and masks. And I think it's important to make sure that folks are um, letting the healthcare and those adjacent have ample uh, ways to get those masks and and you know look to others and make your own masks uh, facial coverings your fabric coverings um so that they can have uh the masks that they need to protect themselves that's right well thank you so much sonia smith king for joining us during our q a um thank everybody out there uh who joined us for this live uh thing there will be um a link to play it back if you want to show it to somebody else or go back over some of the some of the measurements and uh, and uh, to do instructions. Um, and meanwhile, just thank you for being here. We appreciate your support of KPCC and our our public service mission of keeping everybody informed um, during the coronavirus national emergency.